Bringing 262 Heavy, wind calm, runway 31 left, clear for takeoff, caution weight turbulence, previous departure, Heavy uh, 777. The desire to fly has been part of mankind's longing for generations. The desire to soar above the clouds and look down on the world we inhabit is strong, some would say a carnal part of our being. This week we are going to review a few of the Flight Simulator X planes I have spotlighted, pick a few favorites, and trace the evolution of flight as can only happen in a video game simulator. First though, let's visit my Flight Simulator X hangar that I have virtually located at Princess Julian Airport in saint martin for reasons of it is beautiful. This is a place of vast selection and numerous color schemes. It was also a reason for this five part show, as I need to remove a few planes to increase performance. Still, this is just a slice of the thousands of freeware and payware planes out there for Flight Simulator X. But for me, this is also one of the best features of Flight Simulator X. I can try them all, fly them all, and pick the best of them to keep in my hand. Now let's get started on our journey of flight. While man started with balloons and gliders, it was the effort of the Wright brothers that many credit as starting us on our journey of powered flight. While there is some controversy over who exactly flew first, many credit the Wright Flyer as the first. Simple, dangerous, but capable, the Wright Flyer is a great plane to fly in Flight Simulator X to get an idea of where our journey started. But here also, our journey diverges. Aircraft can be used as a means of war or a means of peaceful transportation. We will walk the route of peace first and follow the evolution of the peaceful giants that grace our skies today before returning to the deadly birds of prey. Early aircraft were often employed first as mail planes, but the speed led to the desire among the rich to travel the skies. The Junkers Ju-160 was a leading example of an early transport. It was not glamorous or luxurious, but it was faster than the alternatives and had an air of prestige. The era of the prop liners in the United States started with aircraft like the DC-3 and this Boeing 247. Larger than the Ju-160, these aircraft served small airlines just getting into the passenger business like Eastern, TWA, and United. The prop liners held sway as the best way to travel, some becoming true queens of the sky until the first commercial passenger jet appeared on the scene. While flawed by today's standards, and with some post-accident hindsight we understand why, the de Havilland Comet still shook the aviation world. Faster, higher, smoother. These were just some of the adjectives used to compare the Comet to the prop liners of the day. The Comet brought jet travel to the consumer and refocused the entire industry on jets instead of props. Built to serve the far-flung British Empire, the Comet showed it was possible to build an economical passenger jet. When Boeing 707 roared onto the scene, the world truly entered the jet age capable of transatlantic flight in half the time of the beautiful Lockheed Constellation, the 707 quickly established jets as the way of the future. Shiny new planes, many still named by their airline, plied the skies like clipper ships, transporting thousands in a level of comfort, undreamed of when the first DC-3 took to the air just a short 22 years earlier. Capable of flying above many storms, the 707 and its competitors redefined passenger travel. New airlines and new routes were set up to take advantage of the speed and ability of the new jetliner. With the 707 ushering in a new age in aviation, it was found that smaller jets were needed to fill niche roles. Boeing 727 and Hawker Siddeley's Trident were just two examples as airlines sought to replace prop liners to satisfy their customers' desire to take flight in the new jets and show that they were modern. These new jets sought to fill a role between the larger 707 and the smaller, slower prop liners that served airports that were just incapable of handling a 707. While the 727 went on to a successful career with many still operating in the freight markets today, 
the Trident's career was derailed by delays in technology. Designed with cutting-edge electronics, the Trident had many abilities the 727 did not, but its production was delayed by adherence to changing requirements, the fickleness of the UK government, and that cutting-edge technology. At the same time, the USSR introduced their own models to ensure their country and their allies had similar jet transports. The Aleutian IL-62 being just one of many jets designed to look and operate like Western jets. Some would say that the designs were stolen, but regardless of whether they were obtained by reverse engineering, espionage, or just observation, the Soviet aircraft were uniquely designed to handle the rugged Soviet environment. While the 707 Clipper was an important aircraft and was larger than the prop liners of the era, it wasn't large enough. And soon, a new Queen of the Skies took flight, and in one move, shrunk the world. Having on holiday on the other side of the Atlantic, or the Pacific, was as easy as stepping into the doorway of the Queen and sitting back for a day. Today, even many without a love of air airplanes can identify 747 by its defining hump. The venerable plane is entering yet another generation. 100, 200, SP, 300, 400, and now the Dash 8i Intercontinental. And 747 still flies today, coming up on 50 years since its first flight. McDonnell Douglas and Lockheed tried to fill a gap that existed between the new Queen of the Skies and the smaller planes. In a time before ETOPS rules, the Trijet ruled the oceanic waves where the larger 747 just couldn't go. The DC-10 suffered from early accidents that damaged the aircraft reputation. But the plane lives on in the cargo fleet, only just now today being replaced in the FedEx fleet by newer aircraft. While the DC-10 lives on in freight lines, the L-1011 was a short-lived passenger plane that just never got enough traction to keep Lockheed in the passenger market. The plane had many advanced features, but it was found to be less useful in the freight fleet and not as useful as expected in the passenger market, and the TriStar faded from that memory. jets were in, and Boeing was big, but not all was well for Boeing. A new competitor was rising from the ashes of World War II Europe, a competitor with ambition, financing, and flexibility. The rise of Airbus with the introduction of their A300 brought the first non-U.S. competitor that Boeing had to truly fear. The A300 and its sibling A310 introduced Airbus to the world and set a tone for battles down the road between what would eventually become the two big aircraft producers. The A300 and the A310 brought about many innovations that challenged them, helped airlines, and advanced the industry. Saved from their dust bin by the introduction of ETOPS rules, allowing twin-engine aircraft to fly over water, the A300 and A310 saved airlines fuel, were cheaper to fly, and introduced the concept of a two-man flight crew to the industry. Boeing may have been down, but they fought back with a pair of siblings of their own, the 757-767 project. Aircraft that are still today flying the skies and bridging the world. While the hot rod of commercial aviation, the 757, is no longer in production, it is still used worldwide and loved by many aviation enthusiasts for its takeoff performance. With stellar hot and high performance, the 757 can fly into mountain towns with better revenue per available seat mile than any other aircraft that can make that same hot and high takeoff. While the 757 is no longer produced, the 767 is still rolling off the production lines and bridging nations, continents, and oceans, 
bringing people and goods closer. For a while in the 1990s, the 767 was the most frequent plane flying the skies over the Atlantic, as it provided better economics than any other aircraft available at the time. While no longer considered a premium passenger plane, the 767 is still actively being produced as a freighter. FedEx is replacing their DC-10s with the new 767-300F. And many airlines today still fly their 767s on premier routes, including the premium New York City to London market.